All right, let's talk about the Desmond Ritter problem. I mean, it's, I feel like I've made this video a hundred times already this season, but it's still fascinating to me. I don't know if I've ever seen a player quite like Ritter who the blunders he has are just unbelievable. But I actually think the ups are still pretty good. Like, I don't think that on a per play basis, he's been a bad quarterback. It's just the mistakes have to be cleaned up. And let's start off, start off with this one. Uh, this is kind of one a lot of people were talking about, which for valid reason. So B. John Robinson just running out to the flat on the top of the screen on a third and goal situation. Ritter takes the snap, uh, runs a play action, is ready to get the ball to B. John Robinson here, who is open and definitely could have a touchdown. I mean, it, it would be a touchdown if Ritter hits him. But Ritter's throw was just wide, and I mean, it wasn't horribly off, but it was horribly enough off, given how open B. John Robinson was, and there was pressure in his face, you can kind of use that, but like, that's just a missed throw, and that cost you four points here in a game you lost by four points, you know, uh, so obviously the whole thing, you know, whole, whole game changes uh, if this is a touchdown instead of a field goal, who knows if, you know, what holds and what doesn't, but that's just a mistake, and really, I mean, for Atlanta, that's been this the season, right? Is they've been making mistakes. Like going over here to this one, I'll be honest, I don't even know how much I blame uh, Ritter for on this one. Like this is a, it's really, I mean, it, you you can go both ways. You can say this is a great defensive play. You can say this is a terrible offensive play call. Either way, Tampa Bay knew this play was coming, and that is in many ways a. Uh, you can definitely point to the offensive play call and say, well, if the, the defense knows it's coming, it's probably, you've probably done it too many times. We're watch what's going to happen. So Ritter takes the snap and you see Ritter's turning the other direction. They're really trying to help sell this run fake. Despite that, for Carlton Davis, the corner here, he's kind of saying, well, if it's a run to the bottom of the screen, I'm not really impacting this play anyway, but your guy, you're setting up as though it's going to be a screen pass in, on this side of the field, so I should run over and make something happen. Again, you have to know, you have to figure he saw something on tape like this and saw that this is the play that could be coming. As you see, he just jumps the route, gets the interception. It's like usually on you know uh, intercepted screen passes, you blame the quarterback for not reading it. But like when the play concept is designed for the quarterback to be looking in the other direction until they're throwing the football, not a lot you can do there if you're Ritter. You kind of have to just throw it and hope that it's working out. Uh, to me, that's a play calling issue. But either way, uh, it's it's a, a bad mistake as that set up seven points for Tampa Bay. Again, in the game, they lost by four points. To me, this play definitely is a uh, a mistake by Ritter, uh, although maybe not everyone would view it that way. I do. So it's going to be uh, Antoine Winfield. He's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against a fullback here. Watch him as this play begins. He's going to go actually go around the fullback. So, you know, uh, interesting maneuvering there by him. But we're still three seconds into the play. And I know there was a play action involved, but you got to be getting ready to make this throw. You got to be going into this quicker. At the very least, if you're not going to make the throw, you have to have two hands on the football and you have to be aware pressure could be coming. Instead, watch him with one hand on the football, doesn't throw it, and kind of, if you can't have the one hand, you can't have the ball hanging out like that. You just can't, unless you know you're in a clean pocket, which there's no reason to suspect that you'd be in a clean pocket that far into the play at that point. That is a mistake by Ritter. Uh, you know, he also had another fumble, kind of a fumbled snap uh, here type thing in this game that uh, was also recovered by Atlanta. So both of those were recovered by Atlanta, but still, those are things you have to cut down on. But like going over here, the weird thing about Ritter is like, okay, if he was just making those plays and wasn't doing much else, well, fine, then let's get rid of him. Like, okay, no big deal. We don't, he's not the guy, but that's not the case. I mean, Ritter is making some legitimately good plays. And, and I mean, even this one, which I think is certainly more of a Drake London good play, I would still qualify as a good play by Ritter. So Drake London running a route that's going to try to get in between the gap and coverage between Winfield and Carlton Davis, who are covering deep down the field. Ritter's going to take the snap. He's going to say, hey, we're down touchdown. We need a big play. Let's throw it up to my best receiver. Not a bad strategy. And it's not wide open, but there is a window. And Drake London can it make the, you know, great catch. So, you know, it's going to take a great throw for this to work, but sure, try it. As you see, I mean, yeah, this was an incredible catch by uh, London for sure, but it was a great throw from Ritter as well. And I think that he deserves credit for that. So he is capable of doing this. And, you know, while I don't have any plays about this next point, uh, you know, he does do a good job just running the offense. I feel like for the most part, when they scheme guys open, well, he missed you know, uh, Bijan earlier in the game, he does do a good job at hitting them, like the over the middle routes he is very good at. And even this play was a huge play. It's a, you know, just looks like it's, it's an option play. And again, 
some of these are, they look like option plays, but there actually isn't an option there. It's a quarterback design run all the way. But typically, it's the edge rusher that you're looking at. This is uh, Joe Tryon Joyinka, the edge rusher for Tampa Bay. You see, though, when Ritter takes uh, the snap and then keeps the ball, I mean, Tryon Choyinka is all over him. So if this was a read, it's a terrible read, but I don't know if this was actually a read. This might have been one of those you're supposed to, you know, be running all the way. I would assume that's the case because if it's a read, definitely should have handed that football off. So, okay, you're in a bad situation here, but one of the things that Ritter does bring to the table is he is very athletic and he's going to show that off here. Watch him use his speed and even gets a little stiff arm there. He gets around Tryon Shoinka and gets into the end zone for what honestly could have been a huge touchdown. I mean, you look at the situation there. It put them up with three and a half minutes left. Their defense had played great in that game. You know, Tampa Bay got the drive down the field to win the game for them. So at the end of the day, it, it didn't work out. It is what it is. You would have liked to see it work out and it didn't. Okay, fine. At the same time, though, you, on one hand, do look at these great plays and say, man, there is good stuff here. And, and, like, that's the frustrating thing with Ritter is he isn't just a trash quarterback. But at the end of the day, he still is, even at his best, a good game manager, I would say, who can make the occasional play with his legs. Uh, he's almost, like, at his best, is still a diet Ryan Tannehill, right? And when he is at his worst, he's making these awful plays. So... I kind of come away with this game as I've come away with a lot of Desmond Ritter games of if you take away his worst five plays of the game, he looks great. And if you were to take away his worst five plays in every single football game he's played this season, he'd be a legitimately good quarterback, I think. But he still probably wouldn't be an elite quarterback. And when you still have to add on those negative plays, he isn't, in my opinion, doing enough to make up for it. Still think he should be the starter, in my opinion. I still think he's done enough for that. Uh, and I still think the Falcons have a very good chance to make the playoffs. In fact, I would still bet on them making the playoffs because, you know, the division is not the strongest, let's be honest. And all you have to do, you play Carolina, you play Indianapolis, Chicago, and New Orleans. Those are your four teams. If they go three and one, I feel like that gets you in because Tampa Bay has to play Green Bay and they have to play Jacksonville. So I think three and one would be enough uh, there. And then for Atlanta, if you were to uh, beat the Saints, you know, it's all contingent on that, assuming that one, their one loss isn't to the Saints. To beat the Saints the last game of the season, you would have the tiebreaker over them. And I think the Saints, you know, their schedule isn't super easy either. So, you know, you're in a good spot. You're still okay. Uh, and, you know, but that's just kind of how I view Desmond Ritter right now. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.